All right, everybody, and welcome back to the Goody Pantry. Today we're going to continue with our pub series, and this is episode four. And as you can see by the picture, today we're going to be doing lasagna. Now, this was a popular dish back when I used to work in a pub. So we're going to make our own version. We're going to upscale it a little bit. So there's the ingredients on the screen. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. Let's get into it. So we're going to start with the sauce first. So this is what we've got. We've got grated carrot, onion, basil, tomatoes, vegetable stock, and passata. So what you want to do is you want to get your onions, your carrots, and your tomatoes into a pan first with no oil. You just want to get them in a hot pan and start sweating them down as they are. This will bring out the flavor better by doing it this way. Give them a good stir, then get your lid on and give it a few minutes. After a few minutes, lid off and then give it another good stir. Now what's happened is all the heat in there started drawing out the flavor and this is what gives you a better flavor for your sauce. So I'm just going to zoom in there and you can see the color of the onions and the carrots and everything changing. So once you've got that done, we're now going to add our garlic at this point. So this is one tablespoon of garlic. And we're just going to give that another good stir. And then we're going to add in our basil. Now this is a whole bunch of basil, just with the stalk cut off. And get that in and give it another good stir. Once you've got that done, we're now going to add our vegetable stock. And we're going to add our passata. So you're going to put, give this a stir and you're going to get the lid on. You're going to cook this for about 10 minutes so all the flavors can come together. Now what's great about this is it's known as a pomodoro sauce, which just means tomato sauce. But this base sauce can be used for just about every tomato-based pasta dish or Italian dish. Or whatever. So I like to make a good batch of this. And then I'm going to be using half of this for the lasagna and the other half I'm going to put in the freezer. And it's great you can just take it out it's done and it works really well so once you check in the tomatoes are soft we're now just going to blend this sauce and this is the tomato sauce done so once that's all done put that to one side and we'll continue on so this is the filling so we've got our mints we've got our stock onions and garlic so again, just like with the sauce, get your mince in on its own first, but don't add any oil. There's enough fat already in mince that you don't need to add any. If you pour it in dry and just gently break it up like I am, we're going to put the lid on and we're going to give it a couple of minutes. And what you'll see is the meat will render the fat out of it. So this is sometimes why you get a really oily lasagna. It's because people use oil to fry it and then it just has too much oil. So if I zoom in again, now you can see where the fat is starting to render out. So this has been there for two minutes with the lid on. So now just give it a good stir and start breaking down any of the clumps of mince. Once you've got that done, we're going to do the same thing. Get the lid back on. Another three minutes, lid off, and just repeat. Just keep breaking down the mince. And you can see even more of that fat now what's come out the mince. So once it's at this part and it's all started to colour, we're going to add in our onions. So add your onions in and give them a good stir. And you're then going to go in with your garlic. And just do the same. Give that a good stir. And let everything cook together. So at this point, I'm just going to take this aside and drain off the excess oil what's in the pan. And then back onto the stove. Now this part is optional, but I like to add a good glug of red wine. So now going in with our stock. And again, you're going to give that a good stir. And 
and we're now going to go in with our homemade tomato sauce now i've got 600 mils here of the the pomodoro sauce that we made so now i'm going to give that another good stir and this will then be transferred to the oven to finish off cooking so this is going to go into the oven at 160 fan 180 regular gas mark free 320 fahrenheit and you're just going to put that in there for a good 90 minutes and what that's going to do one the meat's going to get very tender but it's going to reduce the liquid so you've got a nice sauce so while that's in there we're going to start off our bechamel so i've got my butter in here and this part again is optional but i've got a nice teaspoon of mustard i like them if you don't like mustard you don't have to put it in so you're going to melt the butter down now for the bechamel and when that's all melted you're then going to add your flour so you want the, the heat down low for this part and start mix it together and it'll form a thick paste or what's known as the roux so once you've got that all together and it forms a thick paste you're just going to let it rest for a minute and then we're going to add our milk now with the milk this is back on the heat and you add it little by little and you'll see while well, here so i've added that in and you can always see it's starting to thicken up so now i'm going to add a bit more but again only a bit and now i'm going to thicken it again uh, whisk it again now as you can see as i whisk it here straight away it's all blended all the lumps have gone if you pour all your milk in at once that's what will give you a lumpy bechamel. So you start this part off and when it's got it in, as it thickens up, you then just keep adding milk. Add a bit, whisk it in, thicken it up, add a bit, whisk it in as it thickens up and just keep repeating the process. So we've got this here now, so I've just put it, I've, I've got about a pint now of the milk in the bechamel so at this point I'm going to add my stock pot now you want to add this halfway through because what can happen is anytime you use a stock cube or a stock pot especially this way it adds to the thickness of your sauce so that's why you don't want to add it in the end because you might end up with too thick a sauce so you put it in halfway stir it in and then continue with your milk So once you've got all the milks incorporated now, and as you can see, those bubbles starting to come up at the side. So I've got this on the lowest heat. Once them bubbles start to appear on the side, your sauce is going to just going to cook out now the flour. So the thickness of your sauce at this point is how it will remain for the rest of the time. So it's just going to sit here on that low simmer for another 10 minutes to get rid of all the flour taste. So it's been 90 minutes and night. here's my filling now out of the oven. Now you can see just how much that sauce and stock has reduced, which is what you want. It's not supposed to be swimming in sauce when you make lasagna. It should just be a nice thick coating around the meat. So we've got all the components ready, so now it's time to start building. So I've got a large tray here, This and this recipe will easily do six people. So in my tree, I started off with some of my bechamel and then on top of that we're then going to put our meat sauce or ragu whichever way you call it and what you want to do you just want to be able to cover the bottom of the tin and then once you've got it in just level it out and then on top of that you're going to go in with your parmesan cheese and then once you've done that take your fresh pasta sheets and layer them on top and then you're just going to repeat this process except this time you're going to start with the meat the parmesan 
then they'll bechamel. And what this does, it just adds layers of texture and taste throughout the lasagna. So again, just keep repeating every step until you've used up all your meat. You should have around three layers. Then with the last lot of pasta on the top, you're going to take the remainder of your bechamel and you're going to pour that over the top. And make sure you've got a good layer here of the white sauce because the last thing you want is your pasta to be pop popping through because then it'll go dry and hard. So get a good uh, layer of sauce on the top. And once you've got that done, we're going to sprinkle a bit more parmesan on. And now I'm just going to leave this to rest for about an hour. So it's rested for an hour. And now I'm going to top it with the cheese. Now I'm using a mozzarella and cheddar mix. That's the one I prefer. I think it tastes the best for the lasagna. But you use whichever one you like. If you like just cheddar cheese, by all means do that. So you're going to make sure you've got a good layer of the cheese on the top. And then this is going to go into a preheated oven at 180 fan, 200 regular, gas mark 5, or 380 Fahrenheit. And then after 30 to 40 minutes, it will come out like this. And then once you cut a slice, it comes out like that. And this is why you've got a good layer of the sauce on the top. You can see it's just oozing down the sides and it's just so nice when you've got that blend of the bechamel the parmesan and the meat but running right through the lasagna rather than just on the top hey right, thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe hit the bell icon drop me a comment what do you think of it if you make it let me know how you think thought it turned out don't forget if you want any requests you can make them in the comments as well thanks for watching and i'll catch you the next one